Hello friends, welcome to the epic raid guide Behemoth. Behemoth is a 16-man raid requiring eye level 1620 for the global release based on the roadmap. Korea's requirement is eye level 1640. Defeating Behemoth will provide you scales to transcend your weapon or trade for other materials. The raid itself is very easy. The only difficult part is gathering 15 people to play with you. Most of the patterns are slow with obvious telegraphs and there are also 8 revive tokens for the team. This video will cover both gates for the raid because the general fight and the thought process is the same for both gates. Before you start, there will be 4 side guardians you need to defeat. You need to pre-decide which parties will go over and defeat them with Mario. Actual mech starts around 455 lines after a short cutscene. As for battle items, other than specified in a bit, take darks, stimulant, and atrophin. 9 o'clock is always the first guardian you need to kill. It's a lightning scorpion, where he'll always reflect you with lightning stunts if you hit him. You need to take destruction bombs here. There's a couple of ways. You don't attack until he counters, destroy his tail, to remove his stun lightning reflex. You can also rely on Splendid Sacred Charm, or Gunlancer's Awakening to brute force through. However, you must counter him either way and destroy his tail, or you will be stunned every time you attack him. After the first guardian, the other three guardians Guardians at 3, 5, 7 o'clock will appear randomly. Mario will always mention the next Guardian's appearance through the dialogue and the minimap will always indicate where it is. 3 o'clock is Yoho Light Guardian. This party should take Fire Grenade. The Guardian has a mech where it will do a stagger check and spawn various rooting tornadoes. Free throwing fire grenades will free people easily while trying to brute force the stagger check. Gunlancer's Awakening also works here. So if you have a Gunlancer in your raid group, send that party at either 9 o'clock Scorpion or 3 o'clock Yoho. 5 o'clock is Carligos Light Guardian. World Bomb is recommended here. Beginning of the fight, he takes reduced damage because of his buff, and the buff gets weakened if you destroy his black orbs. There is nothing special about this fight other than that. 7 o'clock is Valganus Light Guardian. He is just like Valganus. You're able to do full damage if you gather 3 light powers. His patterns are a little bit faster, and the sacrifice mech happens really quick too. I recommend putting all focus on this mech when you see a light orb appear on your head. One player will switch to black after a few moments, and that player must get bitten on purpose. Failure to do so will cause a death explosion. Again, the time you have is very short when the black orb player is indicated. This side guardian mech causes global wipe, and this wipe happens if the NPC Mario dies from the fight. This is usually from players not getting into the guardian fight fast enough, or defeating them fast enough. The biggest cause of this is the corresponding party not being able to react and travel fast enough to fight the Guardian because they're preoccupied fighting Behemoth. So try to look at your surroundings like the minimap when Mario starts his dialogue throughout the fight. Behemoth Raid has a self-stacking buff. You get 0.1% attack power per stack. If you gather all 45, you get additional 5% for a total 9.5% attack power increase. It works just like Hanumatan Guardian. Getting hit by Behemoth's elemental attacks will take away 3 stacks. Behemoth has water, lightning, and wind elemental attacks. By themselves are not much of a threat, but together gives you debuffs that are very detrimental. Getting hit by water attacks will put a water icon top of your head, and you are in a drenched state. This is uncleansable debuff. You can see how many people are drenched by looking at the boss's buff icon called Focus. Having more stacks of this will cause him to queue special patterns that often contain lightning attacks. If you get hit by his lightning attacks while drenched, you'll be surged. This is a non-cleansable debuff where you lose percentage-based HP over time while take 40% additional damage. The damage over time doesn't kill you but drops your HP to 1. Surge players give 2 stacks to Behemoth's focus buff. This is the other number one reason of sudden deaths to players. Just be extra careful to not get hit by his lightning attacks, they are often pre-telegraphed. Wind attacks behave the same way as well. These are cleansable long debuffs. You won't be able to gather attack power stacks when you have this debuff, and if you get hit by water or lightning attacks during this, these tornadoes get worse into a typhoon or a lightning tornado debuff. These extend your drench or surge debuff per second duration left over from the typhoon debuff. So it is crucial to ask for cleanses if you're in this state. His tail attacks and scratches apply uncleansable red scale debuff. You just take 10% additional damage. For example, if you see my gun lancer here, I got drenched. And since a lot of people get drenched, Behemoth casts a lightning ball pattern afterwards. This is a vacuum bite attack that kills you when bitten. You'll see this very often. It's a super dangerous pattern for head attackers. I got greedy on my surge cannon here and got hit by the attack, but not grabbed due to combat readiness super armor. This is a wind lightning pattern. My drench becomes surge and I also get lightning typhoon debuff from this. This raid will basically give you no immediate threat if you keep paying attention to your debuff bar. So make sure you pay attention to it if you can. 
Top left is an icon that indicates Behemoth's body parts. If you mouse over it, you can also see how much damage is left to destroy the body parts. Sometimes you'll see a target mark with the blue circle. This is a weakness point. Hitting this counts as head or back attack. If the blue bar depletes to zero, that body part will get destroyed. Destroyed wings do get recovered when the body recovers, but the head and tail stays permanently destroyed throughout the fight. If the head is destroyed, attacking the head when weakness spot is shown will yield about double damage. As for tail, it removes the electricity portion of the damage modifier during gate 2 final phases, but other than achievement hunting, there is really no value in destroying the tail. When you see the body gets destroyed throughout the fight, the boss will get staggered and you'll see both wings at weakness state. This is a DPS check. If you happen to destroy both wings before he recovers his body, the boss will fall to expose his head as a weak spot. If not already destroyed, destroying the head will provide additional time to deal double damage for an extended period of time. As for coordinating this, it is more optimal for everyone to focus on one wing at a time instead of splitting up. This is because you get additional time on the DPS check if you destroy one of the wings, giving you more time in general to succeed the mech. Make sure darks and proper buffs are in place, and always use Atrophin to succeed the DPS check. It's not the end of the world if you fail it though. The destroyed wing will recover, but the damaged wing will stay low, which will make the next body destruction make the DPS check much easier. Additionally, my number one tip on this criteria is to memorize this normal pattern. Behemoth will raise his wing and slam the ground. The opposite wing will be rooted and it will show you a weakness spot. The faster everyone reacts to this pattern, you can carve out some of the wing's HP. If you're lucky, you can even pre-destroy the wing before the body destruction. Same thing applies for counters. Behemoth counters are pre-scripted. It always happens after about 2 minutes into the fight and after major patterns. When Behemoth is countered, he will show weakness spot on the head. If you react to this fast enough, you'll be able to carve out or do double damage if already destroyed. There is one more universal mech, and it's the Tornado mech. This is a time-based mechanic that you will see often. You will see gray lasers coming outwards in an array based on the boss. There will be 8 total, and Gate 2 will have an enhanced version. After a few moments, Behemoth will spawn a gray tornado that will come outwards from his body. It will slowly move across and stop at the end of the line. If you leave this tornado for too long, it will explode and provide kill damage at a very large radius. You will need to scatter and touch this tornado to remove it. Touching this tornado will make it explode in a range a little bigger than a yearning circle. Everyone around the explosion will receive shock debuff for 2 seconds, which is an uncleansable debuff. If you get hit by another tornado before this debuff runs out, you take huge damage and the shock debuff turns into a confusion debuff. It's an uncleansable debuff that lasts 30 minutes where you receive 50% additional damage. It is very very important to scatter out enough and remove tornadoes without impacting other players. One person can remove multiple tornadoes if they keep an eye out on the 2 second shock debuff. I recommend it splitting up by parties by times 3 and during this time move far away and patiently wait until the tornadoes are split away enough and take care of the tornadoes first before DPSing. Make sure to get into a habit of looking at your debuff bar and your surroundings to prevent accidental deaths. If I had to choose, this is the number one cause of potentially resetting the raid and running out of revives. After all 4 guardians are destroyed, Behemoth will execute his last mechanic. He will fly away and disappear, and he will fly across with the red telegraph, then he will fly across again from that position with a co-op counter. If you fail this, it's a wipe. Succeeding this will activate a stagger check after a cutscene, then more DPS opportunities afterwards. Let's move on to gate 2. Gate 2, in general, the fights are similar, buffs and debuffs are the same, and there are more projectiles and patterns with additional time mechanics and HP based mechanics. There are 4 mentionable patterns, most of them gives you enough time to react because the boss's pre-animation is flying away with lots of camera turns. The ring explosion is where he will fly in the center and show 3 safe spots with the 3 ring explosion. It's like bro shots on gate 3. Getting hit by this will knock you over and the thunderstorm outside does a lot of DOT damage. My tip is to pay attention to the first spot as priority because it's a little bit fast. Be aware of the follow up pizza attack afterwards too. Most people die from the follow up pizza attack more than anything because they don't have their space bar to get up. Small circle safe spot is an explosion where the safe spot alternates. This is the easiest out of the 4 special mechanic but make sure to not get hit by the lightning attacks. Arborhastic Tornado causes a lot of deaths. The camera will zoom out and the boss will spawn a bunch of tornadoes. You will need to be launched up in the air on purpose to avoid the after explosion. My personal timing is when the red telegraph touches the outer ring pattern of the map. If you're too late or too early or touch the blue tornado while traveling, you can still die. Sometimes supports use awakening and DR to just tank the explosion damage. Time stop works as well too but Atrophin is way too important in gate 2. 
Black Hole is also time-based, and it also kills a lot of people here. The boss will spawn a large lightning orb in front of him, and there will be a thunderstorm at the outer ring. There will be vacuum with various lightning damages, and waves that will try to knock you out. My tip is to hold your mouse button and keep moving. As for waves, they alternate, so if you stand where the waves pass, you can easily dodge the second wave. Make sure to keep an eye out on the additional telegraphs to avoid lightning damages. It is important to save Support's Awakening here. Moving on, the Grey Tornado mechanic is also enhanced. And just like Gate 1, this is the number one mechanic that causes wipes and resets. There will be 10 tornado lines total instead. And additional 4 lines will be targeted to the farthest player from the boss, one person per party. And one person per party nearest to the boss will also have purple tornado spawn on them. It lasts 4 minutes, it is about yearning size, and it pushes people away from them. They need to stay near the boss on purpose and get hit by his purple tornado to negate it 1 minute at a time per tick. During this mech, the tornado lines is based on where the boss is facing, so the angle can be confused a little bit. One person from each party will need to decide who will be near the boss to trigger the purple buff, while the rest need to stay far away to clear out the gray tornadoes. Most parties organize this by times 3 per party based on the minimap. The farthest player will need to aim the additional tornadoes so that it doesn't stack, scatter them enough equally so everyone has equal room. Sometimes purple tornado players get hit by the gray tornadoes twice and they can die. For the players that are staying close, my tip is not staying too near the boss. The explosion radius might reach other players. If you look closely, there's a range indicator where you can stand far enough but still be able to remove the purple tornado. So try to stay a little bit farther to give everyone enough room. You need to be versatile on this and adjust positions based on where the players are. So it is really important to pay attention to the minimap and see where about people are standing. There's some TMI mix like side winds that will push you, water pools that can spawn under your feet, and random blue tornadoes. These are not that threatening, but if you can react to let's say the water pool generation, try to place it at the outer area of the map. When you reach 190 bars, there is no point of pushing it further than 160 bars because the last phase will have the boss recovered to 160 bars. The sky will clear up and the behemoth will fly away. In the center, he will power up for a stagger check and it's up to the players to destroy the Selmao crystals nearby to launch it to him. Selmao crystals get launched to the boss based on the number of hits. However, if you hit it too many times, the crystal itself will get destroyed, so it is critical to not hit it too much. For example, some players use placement skills and they sometimes hit the crystals too many times to destroy it by accident. The time limit is about 55 seconds and failing to stagger will need people to hide behind a semi wall to hide from the after explosion. The stagger failure usually comes from destroying too many crystals by accident, so it is crucial to not hit the crystals too many times. Best way to find out is when the crystal releases second set of fragments. You don't need to touch it anymore when you see this. It will naturally get tilted and fly away to the boss. This mechanic needs to be succeeded to have Ren Activator hit an attack to the boss at the end phase, so it is crucial to focus on this mechanic. It's very very easy if you pay attention. When the last phase starts, make sure to dodge the pizza attack. It sometimes kills people. The outer ring will have thunderstorms and it will decrease if you fail counters throughout the fight. Counter is when he will slowly backstep and disappear, and show a telegraph where he will dash into. It's a regular counter, and a follow-up pizza attack will happen where he is countered, so make sure you stay far away after the counter. He will have few normal patterns only and they often have large telegraphs. The only pattern I want to stress out and talk about is his double swipe pattern. It kills most people and you need to memorize it to avoid unnecessary deaths. Boss will take position and swipe his wings across. Stay behind him for this. After his first swing, see where his head is, walk to it, and that's the safe spot for the second swipe. Afterwards, he will slam his tail at the back, so you should move to the sides. This pattern happens very very often. If you can react to this pattern, rest of the fight should be very easy for you. When the boss is staggered, Ren will launch her final attack to Behemoth, making him staggered for a very long time. Remember that this requires Selmao Crystal Mech to be succeeded. This is where you push with your last Atrophin, and supports needs to use stimulus here if they don't have buffs to apply. If everything is executed fine up to here, you should be able to beat the raid without any problems. There are no special things after this. Those of you who are wondering Atrophin timings, for progression, first Atrophin should always be used at the first wing DPS check after body destruction, because you need to destroy the behemoth's head as fast as possible to push very quickly. Second Atrophin can be either used at wings again to succeed additional DPS checks, or you can save it to the head for the second time to optimize double damage opportunity. First head destruction doesn't give enough DPS time, but the second time while the head is already destroyed gives a very long DPS opportunity. Third one should always be used during Ren's hidden attack at the last phase. My general tip is to not worry about uptime too much. The boss will always give you DPS push times throughout the fight. Make sure to know your proper cycles and have darks and buffs in place during these chances. With that, this concludes the guide. 
The raid itself is very easy, but seems hard due to having 16 people playing. It feels more chaotic than difficult, but just keep in mind some of the more important tips I've said here and there will be no issues clearing the raid. If you have any additional questions, feel free to come by and ask. Good luck on your raids and hope you guys have fun clearing. Thanks guys, bye bye!